meaning to yeah start there. Okay. All right, I'd like to call to order the September 17th meeting of the New Canaan Board of Education. Um, before you, you have our minutes from the September 4th meeting, and you've had a chance to look at them. If I could get a motion to approve. Hazel, thank you. Second. Sherry, all those in favor? Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, thank you. All right. Um, Moving on to review and approval of the agenda. Um, we have one addition to tonight's agenda under reports and recognition. We'll be getting a statement of accounts from Dr. Keating. Um, if I could get a motion to make that uh, amendment to the to tonight's agenda. So Hazel, moved. second. Sherry, all those in favor? All those in favor? Sorry. <laughs> Any opposed? Um, it's unanimous. And if I could get a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Katrina, second. Tom, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay, moving on to uh, comments from the public. To ensure the public's right to be heard, the board has set aside time during the meeting for public comments. Two minutes will be allotted to each speaker and a maximum of 15 minutes to each subject. Do we have anyone wishing to address the board this evening? Seeing none, we will move on to reports and recognition. And um, the first item is our facilities project update with Mr. Clark and Mr. Perna. Our facilities department has had a very, very busy summer. Uh, they, they've been working all across the district on projects, both newly approved and finishing up some others that took a little bit longer due to the nature of that project, what have you. We thought that it'd be a good opportunity tonight to run through those projects with you um, that we've been working on both in capital, but through the capital process, but also some, but some projects that we have as a result of budget. Uh, as you know, we've had quite a bit of conversation about uh, some of the maintenance projects, things that we believe we need in the district. And so Dan and John have also found a way to get some of those things done. So we thought it'd be a good opportunity to share with you sort of where we are now that the school year has opened and the, uh, they're finishing up some projects and many others are completed. So Dan. Well, thank you. Good evening, everyone. John and I are very happy to be here tonight and present, uh, as Dr. Let's say, a little report on all the projects we've been working on uh, up to this point. So on the second page, tonight's presentation is broken down into a few different categories of facilities maintenance projects, uh, capital projects, including carryover from prior years and this current year. And then also, uh, John is going to lead us through a discussion on the energy conservation projects that we've had ongoing currently and what we look forward, um, some new opportunities down the road. So it all begins on page three with the project board. Uh, which my kids say, Dad, that is very old school. And I said, yes, it is. And it still works. We do have computers and, and project software. But this we refer to as a living, breathing document. We continue to update it um, as the projects change. Uh, we have it segregated by categories, starting on the left, and it's by fiscal year. So as we go left to right, and we can look at the sequencing of projects and budgeting and and how budgets run into uh, year after year. And uh, the, the, the best part of that is we like to finish it off by the completions. You see a lot of completions out there. But it's also a good reference for anyone that wants to stop in. We update it weekly. We, we discuss all the status of the projects weekly, uh, sometimes with contractors, other times with different people in facilities working on it. So it's, it's the project board. And uh, we find it very valuable to help us keep organized, stay organized. So the next page, the Update on facilities maintenance projects. Uh, the total plan for this year is 31. To date, we have completed 21. And we start off in the east. If it doesn't, uh, if it's not completed, it's in the process of being completed. Uh, so east school maintenance projects, you can see the natural gas piping, which is what you also see for the South Sachs and the high school. That is, of course, preparing our existing boiler rooms to receive the natural gas. So There's a lot of pipe work controls, regulators, and so forth as we convert the boilers over to, to gas. 95% um, at this point um, at the East School. 
Also, air conditioning system in the main entrance at the, at the uh, front entrance of the e-school. Uh, we replaced all the air filters and the unit ventilators. Throughout the district, there's over 240 of those, so it's important that we stay on top of that with our preventative maintenance. And then funnel ball, which is, as you probably know, one of the most favorite uh, toys that we have in the playground. And so we have a part on order for that. So that's in process to get that fixed. Hey, Dan, Dan just if you don't mind, uh, when you say 95% complete for the natural gas piping and equipment, as we spoke <coughs> earlier, you shared with me that we're, we've completed as much as we can until the gas is actually connected and charged. Is that, is that correct? Right. There's, uh, the one thing that we have in this district is that pilots, to start the boilers, are propane. And of course, we're going to convert that over to natural gas as well into gases. But the code does not allow you to have two gas piping systems into the boiler at the same time. So we'll have to do some coordination with Eversource when we do go to switch over and when we have gas right in the school and everything checks out inspection wise, then we can safely remove the propane feed for the pilot and pipe in the gas, natural gas. So that, that's a good detail to, to uh, remember because we won't be 100% until obviously the boilers are running. So if we go to the south, which is the next page, same situation you can see there. Um, and then some of the projects that we completed, we replaced a bathroom door that was broken. Uh, we installed new floor mats, and this is a way to be able to keep dirt out of, out of the schools uh, during inclement weather periods. Um, we're converting over to round tables, and so the first phase was purchased and is at the school uh, this summer. We also added a boiler room. The boiler room, more equipment onto the generator so we have better security in terms of when we lose power that we can heat the building and, and keep the proper lights on and so forth. That's completed. And we're also installing new classroom shades in areas in one wing of the uh, south building that did not receive them during the construction project when <coughs> the windows were, were replaced. So we'll finish that up this fall. Continue on to the south on the next page is we added an additional uh, alarm keypad for the security and the custodial staff to be able to arm and disarm the building at different locations. Uh, again, replace the air filters and all the unit ventilators. And um, we're looking to improve the fence on the, around the playground. Um, that's in process. And that'll be done uh, sometime this fall as well. Heading over to West, to playground equipment repairs. We had to replace some equipment um, on the playground in the back that was broken over, over time. That's been completed. We also replaced a garage door that access where the materials and equipment are stored for the maintenance needs at the West School. We put a new grease trap, uh, vent on the grease trap. We also, again, changed the air filters and the unit ventilators. And we started to install, at least uh, we're designing the power requirements because the hand dryers have come in for the schools. So we're doing all the engineering ourselves to do the wiring and so forth so that we can install the hand dryers. Brings us over to SACS, the maintenance projects for SACS. Again, floor mats, we found that uh, we have to make sure that we replace them as they wear out because after a while they really don't do much to remove all the debris and the dirt and sand and so forth and snow off your feet. So uh, we have new mats throughout the school. We also refurbished the HVAC system in the main office at SACS. It started to, to fail uh, n near the end, of the end of the school year last year, so we were able to get all the parts and get that replaced and, and uh, back online over the summer. Same thing with the heating valve at, uh, at the gym at the, at the school. We noticed that it wasn't working consistently and sometimes would be slow, so we needed to replace that just to protect the heating system for the gym. Now, the vestibule mats is different than the ones I spoke of earlier. When you go into SACS, either at the main entrance or at the lower division. In between the doors, there's an actual system there. If you ever notice it, it's a metal grading system. And that's more aggressively removes the dirt and the sand and salt from your feet. Again, this is all just preventative maintenance to be able to maintain the, our, our, our uh, floors and a good shine and also keep them safe and from being slippery. So we replaced both of those, the uh, main entrance unit and also at the lower division. And then again, again natural gas piping and equipment for the boilers and sacks. That's in process, too. The rest of the items that we work on in sacks this year, new parking lot lighting control, so we can control them and monitor their operation through the energy management system. Again, replacing air filters and all the unit ventilators. And same thing, uh, planning out the design and the wiring scheme for all the new electric hand dryers.
for the restrooms. Switching over to high school, some other projects we completed this summer include a new fire alarm pressure gauge uh, in the back of the school at the loading dock where the employees and the truck drivers, delivery people, and our custodians enter. We replaced the uh, concrete staircase there that had worn away over some time. We put a new spray booth in the wood shop for the STEM teacher so that the students and himself can safely work on material and, and do finishing uh, in their workshop. Again, natural gas piping in the high school as well. And then library shades to replace all those when the uh, current Venetian blinds that are along the back of the library itself looking outside. We have those uh, coming in and they'll be installed too. Finishing up at the high school, the guidance Near the guidance area, there's an outside vestibule that leads into the school, and the heating unit up in the, in the ceiling failed over the winter, so we replaced that. In the media center, we converted the lights over to LED lighting and installed some light dimmer uh, switches in there so that they can adjust the lighting as they need to for different events or different needs. We're also upgrading the ID card access system. We have the current system that we use in all the schools for the staff to access the building. And we had uh, an older system that failed that was predated the existing system. So we're taking those locations and installing our current card access system. It makes it more convenient for staff to be able to enter the school. And again, hair, <coughs> hand dryers, same thing. We'll have hand dryers going into the high school, just planning out all the electrical at this point. So the next uh, category are capital projects funded from and they're carried over from prior years. It might be projects that are ongoing <coughs> and uh, will continue. Um, so of note, the masonry restoration repair uh, account that's funded. Um, this particular project was a SACS expansion joint replacement. This has been something that um, we've gone out to bid a couple of times and we're finally able to select a qualified bidder and have the work done and there'll be a picture um, in the slide presentation and a few slides from now about that. That was completed. We also constantly watch our panels, the sidewalks that go around the schools because of the winter cycle, the thaw and uh, melting syndromes where the, the panels actually raise and cause tripping hazards. So the only way to deal with that is to concrete cut them. And we've been successful with that to even out the edges to reduce the probability or possibility of somebody tripping um, as they come in and, or leave the school. Our security system, uh, phase two, we've completed the installation of the equipment. We just need to um, continue on with the commissioning of the system. Another um, large project that we're working on in terms of the masonry is the media center brick wall. That's ongoing now. It's <coughs> on the exterior of the building. And then the south building, there's uh, fund in there for brick and repointing, restoration of the, uh, of the bricks and the mortar, uh, which is to restore and repoint re them. And some of that will be also coordinated with the roofing project at the South School. So the next page has uh, some other carryover items, replace the glass fuse panels in South. That was a project that we started last year. And that's where we have a lot of the old style plug fuses and five different electrical panels throughout the school. And we finished replacing them all with new modern circuit breaker type uh, systems. So that's completed. We did complete roof studies on the east and the west school so that we have an existing condition report and that helped us prioritize for future capital planning, what the sequence should be in terms of the replacement of the roofs. And as you know, currently we're doing a study which will end up with bid documents for the south roof, which we'd like to plan to replace next summer, summer of 19. And then in the subsequent years, the east and then the west school. Also, the next uh, item, East Masonry Restoration and Repair. That's the same thing in terms of repointing and uh, re repairing the brickwork and repointing the, mace, the uh, mortar, and that's in process now. Underground storage tanks at East and West, those are pending. They're actually um, looking, looking to replace those or remove those uh, next year. Um, in the meantime, we're doing the engineering to prepare for that. West Gym floor replacement, that's still in process. We ran into a problem, unfortunately, with uh, water in the, uh, below the slab. Um, the sequence of the work also involved 
a couple of the other projects that are being funded out of this fiscal year's budget, and that is to, in, to install curtain drains and then also tie in all the downspouts from the rain gutters into drainage systems that shed the water away from the building because we believe that was definitely a contributing factor to the water intrusion and leading up to the failure of the floor. So we're still working on that to, um, we're working with our architect and uh, the manufacturer of the new floor to make sure we're taking the right steps to protect the floor and make sure that all the water uh, shed work that we did is successful and that we'll have a good product once we finish the work. We also are working on delaminating floors. Essentially what that means is that at the Sachs building, it's uh, 12 by 12 inch floor tile throughout the school. And uh, so this is a matter of repairs. It's not full blown where you have large areas, but it just happens to be different areas throughout the school where uh, over time maybe the concrete is buckled for whatever reason or there are certain wear patterns. So this fund allows us to go in there periodically and, and replace the broken tiles. Now, earlier you heard us talk a lot about the masonry and a lot of structural work. We have an account there for structural engineering services. All the work that we perform or contractors perform on our, on our behalf, um, it's all uh, managed and monitored by structural engineer to make sure that we're following all codes and everything is being done properly and installed properly. Uh, so that'll continue on. Uh, East corridor ventilation, this is to identify and uh, identify the root cause and then come up with solutions to improve the airflow through the school. And specifically, uh, we're centering in on the corridors and the gym areas that have taken a large amount of outside air and we need to condition it. And so we're looking at different ways that we can be able to accomplish that through the capital budget. So we're studying that right now. So if you turn the next page, you'll see an example of the expansion joint. You can see the blue tile surrounds the floor joint. The existing ones were much larger, uh, larger, and they actually extended above the ground, above the surface of the floor. So there was a lot of masonry involved in there to dig out the, other, the uh, existing one. And then you can see not only horizontal is the expansion joint, but it goes up to vertical uh, sides of the wall at each end. So uh, they were all replaced, and uh, we had 16 of these through the school. And uh, they, it, it came out very, very well. So there's the picture. So this brings us to the current year, 19 projects. So far, we've completed eight. Now the engineering for the oil tanks, we brought a consultant in to make sure that we are doing everything properly and following the state guidelines and actually write the reports for the state, which are in the process of being completed and submitted. So this year, the South and the Sachs building were on the schedule and he completed those. We also have general engineering services uh, in process, again, we're also still looking at other ways to cool not only the East School, but West and South. Engineering for the roof, as I mentioned, uh, we have HB Fishman under contract. They've been doing a lot of work uh, cataloging all the deficiencies and just identifying the roof structure. And, um, and at the end, we'll come up with bid documents that we'll be able to go out um, later this year for bid prices for the capital budget. And then ongoing curb and sidewalk construction that's ongoing at all the schools with uh, replacing curbing, some of the old asphalt curbing, we prefer to have this, the stone curbing, the granite curbing, as well as, again, just repairing sidewalk panels that break apart, rust out, or uh, get damaged from uh, expansion and contraction. So that's what that uh, line item is for. At the East School, current project playground restoration. Uh, playground number one, it was completed. We plan to do playground number two in April. And there'll be a picture of playground number one, the, uh, the results of that. And then painting is uh, ongoing. It's in progress throughout the school. So the next page is the playground. You can see where, uh, when we do this, we go in there, we remove all of the mulch, all the existing. There's some people that only go down a, a few inches or whatever. We think it's the prudent thing to do is to remove it all and then install all, all brand new wood fiber. It's, it's uh, engineered for playgrounds. And then putting a solid border in um, to protect, the, uh, keep the mulch inside and keep it a level playing surface for the kids too. So current year for South School, 
This is part two. You saw that the engineering was completed and we successfully were able to remove the oil tank at the South School. Also, we completed their restoration, uh, again, repointing of the mortar, replacing broken bricks and so forth and, uh, for the chimney on the South School roof. And that, again, we targeted that this year because we wanted to be able to make sure we got that this, completed this year in preparation for replacing the roof next year so that we don't do the roof and then come back later and do the chimney. And there's a sequence there, of course, to protect the new roof. Also, masonry brick uh, restored and repair. That's in process. That will also be a part of some of the work that we'll need to do when we do the roof, just because the flashings and the, and the uh, elevations change. So it just makes sense to do those together, hand in hand with the design of the roof. And then painting again is another it's an ongoing project that we have in process at the school. And there's a picture of all the scaffolding and all the work that you can imagine is required to be able to get that, uh, that work done. That's just a picture of, of that from the summer. Heading over to West, water incursion remediation. You heard me talk about it a little bit. That was done at all three of the buildings to be able to capture all of that rainwater, shed it away, and then again, there were never curtain drains put into the school. So that's important that uh, that's taken care of, uh, which we finished this summer. Classroom plumbing refurbishment. This was a water conservation project that Mr. Perna started a few years ago. And I believe the numbers were uh, 47 uh, toilets were replaced and was it 12? 12 urinals. 12 urinals. So not only are they, uh, well, they help with the water conservation, but uh, also these are all brand new plumbing fixtures and the other ones were tired and it's time to, time to upgrade. And then painting. Painting continues to go on there at the school. So the next picture is a picture of the west. This is just one example of some of the concrete work that was done to keep the uh, walk paths safe and um, secure, especially in the evening hours, making sure we don't have tripping hazards. Now the current year over at Sachs, remediation of the oil tank, that tank was buried in place, which we were allowed to do. And that was successfully completed. And painting again continues on in the school. For the high school, we successfully refurbished the gym floor. Uh, that was included, sanded the whole surface down 16,000 square feet, down to bare wood, and then the several applications of paint. Uh, it also included the necessary striping and markings for basketball, but also for volleyball. We wanted to make sure we corrected that as well. And then numerous coats of the product, of the finish, to be able to make sure that this stands up for years and years to go. And we have a picture there. If you haven't seen it, it, was, uh, it made Mr. Egan smile. So you know, we're happy about that. <laughs> Both Mr. Egan. Both. And there's the uh, picture. But we also continue with painting. And uh, there's an audi auditorium sound system that is in process as well. So that brings us to the energy conservation projects. We have. We've, uh, as you know, have done quite a bit in the past. We have current projects that are ongoing, and we have a lot of ideas and, <coughs> and plans for the future. And the person that was really mostly responsible for doing a lot of that over the past few years is Mr. Perna. And John can uh, speak to a little bit of that now. And uh, take it away. So the, the first one was uh, the high school domestic hot water. Uh, we had a problem. The uh, existing system had a portion of it had failed, and we took the opportunity to research a, a system that was um, propane fired that was convertible to natural gas, knowing that natural gas was coming down the road. That'll give us the ability to basically. Uh, separate the domestic hot water from the existing boiler system, which will give us an opportunity to reset our hot water. We could not do that at the high school. So no matter if it was 60 degrees outside or zero, we had to run 170 degree of water. This will give us an opportunity to put it on a reset schedule. So when it's colder, we want hotter water. When it's cooler, we want uh, cooler water. The LED um, lighting retrofit is moving along very well. Um, we started up at West and we're at South right now. We're about 75% complete at both schools. When we're done with West and South, we'll move over to East. 
East School, uh, we had a balance of about six rooms that we had to do additional CO2 control. Um, so that is um, going to take place probably over one of the fall breaks. The uh, natural gas project is moving along very well uh, with the, the challenges that the gas company faced with the weather that we had over the summer. Um, there's times that they couldn't weld. Um, I think they're doing a phenomenal job. Um, I think we're going to be in really good shape. I'm really excited about the natural gas. Uh, it's going to open up the door to more savings and more incentive money. The um, high school, we're going to, uh, we have a couple of um, energy measures that we're going to be doing under the uh, capital money, putting in some light, lighting centers in the gym and various areas in the school. Um, SACS, a uh, couple of capital projects there. We're going to put frequency drives on two very large air handlers that will save us electricity. And the next one I'm very excited about. The, the next one is our energy management system. And I guess the simplest way to put it is some of the energy management system <coughs> was dated back to 2004. Just like a laptop <coughs> or a desktop computer they have, the ability to improve that gives us the ability to save money. Um, we hooked up a demand meter at Saks and we saved $30,000 last fiscal year on electricity, uh, which was very exciting. Um, the, the thing that is probably the best that's going to come out of this is we've secured 860000 in Eversource incentive money. So that's money that Eversource gives us to improve on our schools on saving energy. That's a fund that we all pay into as part of our electric bill, our homes and commercial businesses, and they give us that money to make improvements. With getting natural gas, we'll be eligible for incentive money for gas enhancements. So that opens the opportunity on our heating systems for them to give us an incentive money to improve the efficiency on our gas. And then we're looking at um, alternative energy. Um, currently it's a joint venture between the Board of Ed and the town on a fuel cell and possible microgrid. And then uh, Dan is doing the engineering on the roofing with the uh, possibility of making the roofs uh, solar ready. So they'll just be able to put the panels right on the roof and, and a, you know, they'll be ready for that. Um, and that's ongoing. Mm -hmm. And that's about it. Any questions? Thank you, Dan and John. Uh, <clears throat> so let me open it up. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Perna or Mr. Clark? Oh, well, I'll start it off then. Um, so I wanted to get an update on the Eversource piping, because I know we had an expectation that that was going to be all ready to go by the start of the school year. And so um, have you ha gotten an update of when those um, pipelines will be ready in the various schools? Uh, we, we met with them <coughs> last week. Um, they're moving along. We talked to one of the project managers a couple of hours ago. Uh, they've made some really good progress. Um, they ran some lines down south, I'm guessing maybe in, at night or over the weekend. Um, they're making steady progress. You know, it, it's one of those things that it's weather related. Right? And, you know, it's, it's a lot of inconvenience for the, the residents in the town. But overall, it has incredible opportunity for clean efficiency and fuel that we'll be using. So. So, so I just have you, I, I, I guess I'd like to look, get a little more specificity yeah. around a date. So I'll share a little bit. Um, the, <clears throat> and Dan, John, Joanne have been meeting with Eversource all through the summer, but you're absolutely right that back in the spring when they came to meet with the board, they had assured the board that they'd be completed with the project by August 25th, I think was the date that they had shared. Um, they still have quite a bit of work to do um, so they are working hard. Uh, it is, there is weather involved with this, but, and they have accepted responsibility for not being completed at this point. Um, but we are anticipating that it will, the lines will be in place prior to the heating season. 
uh, which generally there's an October 15th date I know that people talk about in this with the state um, and we're looking at that and or you know into November if need be but to compliment John uh, Dan and Joanne uh, they've also met with an oil supplier to make sure that if the natural gas is not in place uh, in time to heat the buildings that the oil supplier could come in put a, a smaller tank on site, and since our burners are dual fuel, we'd be able to burn the oil until the natural gas is there. So we do have a backup plan, a plan B. We don't love it. Um, we would much prefer having the natural gas there as promised, uh, but we do recognize that it is can be weather dependent. I also believe there was some conversation about hitting, hitting some ledge along the way, which certainly they were aware of prior to beginning the work. Um, so we'll stay with it and keep meeting with them regularly. Uh, our goal would be to have at least south and west hooked up and going prior to October 15th. We've asked them to, I'm sorry, did I say west? I'm, okay, you're right, south and Saks. Thank you. Um, hooked up and going prior to the start of the heating season because neither of those uh, locations have oil tanks anymore. Set the south oil tank was removed over the summer and as Dan just shared with us, the Saks tank has been um, filled and left in place, abandoned in place. So um, that would be that the, we'd want them to start there and then go to the high school and then we anticipate that East would probably receive it last. Uh, but East still has its oil tank in place and the high school still has its oil tank in place. So they are prioritizing those two for us. We, we hope that it's there prior to October 15th, but if it's not and we need to heat, then we have a plan B that we can use. So I guess my follow up to that would be, I know that in our budget that we, took some cost savings as a result of having the natural gas in place. And so I guess it, it, I'd like to get a better understanding at what point will we be um, under pressure on those um, cost savings that we... Sure, well certainly if we have to burn oil, uh, there will be more cost than we had anticipated. Uh, so it's something that we'll monitor closely as we go. Uh, the, but if we do burn oil at those locations instead of the natural gas that we had anticipated, uh, it'll come at a higher cost. We don't know exactly what it'll be because we don't know what our savings will be. We have the projections from Eversource prior, that they shared with the board back in the spring, and we use those as a general guide as far as the savings went. Uh, but it's something that we'll have to monitor closely. And there are additional costs with even bringing the smaller tanks on site and doing the hookup and getting those to run over at Saks and at South if we have to do so. And is there any, I mean, I know weather is a tough one in any construction related industry. I mean, are there any opportunities to go back to Eversource if they, if we do run into this heating issue and ask for, you know, some sort of, um, you know, rebate? Or we fully anticipate having those conversations okay. if necessary. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Anyone else have questions? Katrina. Uh, I had one. Well, I had one comment. First of all, I did have the opportunity to be at the West Building recently, and I just want to say, the painting and the LED makes a world of difference. It really, it's more than maintenance. It it changes the whole atmosphere, and it's just so bright and happy and. It's very noticeable, so thank you thank for you. all of your good work there. Thanks for giving us the ability to do it. We can't mm -hmm. do it without funding. <laughs> yeah. um, my question is on the school security, the phase two. Can you elaborate a little bit on what, what's involved with that project? I... Uh, phase two, for the high school, we had an old uh, GE uh, badge access. It was actually a FOB system that's no longer supported by General Electric. Okay. Um, so we're in the process of taking that system and adding it to our existing platform, uh, which is much newer and, and updated. And the, the phase two security, uh, that was partially funded by state grant that we received a few years back. Uh, and so they, while well, some of the security uh, measures that we take, we don't talk about uh, in general session, uh, but one of the things we're looking at is an external uh, lockdown alarm that would be lights and sound at the various buildings. And that's the final piece to the phase two security plan. And that should be online very soon. Anyone else? Penny? I just wanted to commend you both on your attention to finding ways to conserve energy. It's not as sexy as say adding solar or doing a fuel cell, you know, all of which might be in our future, but it is incredibly important to help the district save money and, and also just a good thing to do as a, a member of the New Canaan community. So thank you for finding all those. Every year you all look for new ways to make the building systems more efficient. 
And um, I think that the district really benefits from that. So uh, appreciate uh, your ongoing efforts in, in that regard. Thank as you. well as well as all the maintenance projects. Uh, some years we haven't been able to fund those and the buildings do start to look a little bit tired. I had gotten comments in the SACS project about the expansion joints which weren't part of our project and you got it done so the whole school looks fantastic. And uh, I just uh, want to commend you on all that attention to those little project and that little detail it really makes a difference, I think, for our students and, and teachers. So thank, thank you. you on that. I, I was wondering if you could just give us a little bit more detail on where we were uh, with the fuel cell and with the potential, uh, potential for solar yeah. on the roofs. The, the fuel cell is, the, the last we heard from the town, they were still researching uh, different options on their end. And, and the solar, you know, the, the big part of it is when you're putting on a new roof to get the, the best value for solar is having a brand new roof and putting solar on it then versus having a 10-year-old roof Put solar on it, and it, your life expectancy is shorter. So um, it's moving along. Uh, to the uh, roof design, like Dan said, is you know they're looking into what they're going to do to carry in the RFP to be solar ready. So, and are there any estimates about payback in terms of you know efficiency for doing solar or anything like that at this point? It's too early right now. Okay. Yeah, we, we have to part of the investigation is also to understand the structural components of the school. Right. There's over 20 different actual roof surfaces on the South School, so each one is really you have to treat it like a mini roof because there's a defined ending and flashing and everything details and so forth. You have to do over 20 times. But, and of course, there's been additions to the school, so it's really understanding what the <coughs> substrate is, what the structural components are, if it's wood or metal or concrete. And then that all sort of goes into helping you understand what you can do up there with solar or any additional equipment, too. So, but the, um, what we've been asked to do is to be able to have the documents prepared that are available for add alternate to be able to later add a solar system onto the roof. So that's being taken into consideration by the architect with that would have to be look like. And as John said, the other way to do it is it's a collaborative when you're doing it and you, some people will design it at the same time. But it's a, it's a lot of coordination and a lot of effort. And of course the summer is a very small time too. So it's, it's a lot of careful planning. Great, I look forward to more updates on it and thank you again. Anyone else? Okay, well, thank you both very much. It's uh, been, uh, you got a lot done this summer and, and uh, <clears throat> crossed a lot of things off the list. So thank you very much. And I continue to be amazed by the board. <laughs> <laughs> I was just talking with Dan recently about the board and said, you know, some people come into their offices and they put up some inspirational posters or pictures of their families or other things on their office walls and Dan puts up the project board. So that's right where we want them to be. Yeah. Well, we have, of course, pictures in our wallets of our kids, but John also has a picture of the hot water tanks in his wallet. Yeah. <laughs> and I have the gym floor in my wallet. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Anyway. Well, it's, you know, we, it's always surprising how short the summers are, and uh, it's great to see and impressive to see how much you're able to get done in that short window of time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all the support. Thank you. Get us there. Thanks, guys. Okay. Well, enjoy the rest of your evening. Uh, moving on to Statement of Accounts with Dr. Keating. Uh, you have before you the August uh, Statement of Accounts. And each year we provide this uh, to the board for information purposes. We've yet to encumber our salaries and many other accounts. So we just basically wanted you to have it for your <coughs> records. And starting next month, we'll have more encumbrances on the books as of the end of September. And then when we move into October, we finalize things. And then it becomes a very useful uh, management tool for the board. Thank you. All right. Does anyone have any questions? Or? Thank you, Dr. Keating. There's no, no. Perfect. All right. It's a short first meeting. Um, any comments from the public? Seeing none, we'll move on to announcements and future business. Sure, glad to. Our next meeting is, with the board is uh, October 8th. At uh, that meeting, we, are, uh, we anticipate being ready to share with the board some feedback from recent assessments. 
the, those reports are coming in now, and you may have seen some uh, teasers here and there about how we did. I'll give you one more. We did very well. Um, so both Dr. Carenti and Mr. Egan are thinking about and work putting together some presentations. And one of the decisions we're looking to make is do we do uh, K-12 in one evening or should we split that off? And so we'll be sort of looking at all of the data and the best way to communicate that and uh, we'll let you know. The, you also see the final piece uh, or the final handout that you have tonight is the New Canaan High School profile, the 2018-2019 profile. You know, each year our school counseling department puts this together. This goes with our student transcripts, either digitally or you know, in paper, in the envelope, to all of the schools where students are applying. Um, and it's, it's got some information and data around the, the class, last year's graduating class, uh, and about our staff and about our school in general. Uh, I just, I thought to bring it for you tonight, Primarily because on Thursday I'll be speaking with the Board of Realtors here in New Canaan, as I do just about every year, and I'll be sharing it with them as well. Uh, I think it, it hits some highlights about our school district. It has things such as SAT scores and AP performance, um, the courses that are available to our students. Uh, and I think if you, as you look across the summaries that we have, the summary of AP scores, uh, even on the very back, the colleges attended by recent graduates and then the stars with those of just last year's graduating class. Uh, it's a very impressive portrait of our high school and deservedly so. Uh, our students work very hard. Our staff provide an excellent educational experience for them. And we're very, very proud of how, you know, how our students do. And so this is something, this is a way that we communicate to others who may not have the opportunity to come to New Canaan High School, uh, who we are, what we believe, and how we do. Um, and I, you know, and each one is a little different. Some schools have just a single page. Some schools have a, try a fold out like we do here. Um, I credit the counseling department for really taking the time. They use high quality paper. They can think about the layout. Uh, and I've always liked the fact that right on the front, they put the uh, faculty breakdown as far as degrees go. And I think just the fact that we have six uh, JDs and doctorates here teaching our students, working with them every day at the high school, out of a staff of about 120 is a pretty impressive stat. But you can see the other pieces too. So um, both the data that's shared and the way that it's communicated, I think is very effective. effective. And just thought I would share that with the board tonight. Um, tomorrow morning, going to speak with Sachs, uh, the parents of the PTC. Welcome back. I've been to uh, e to west and to south so far, and I look forward to going to east in the high school soon. Um, and there we go. What is the eleventh day of school? Uh, it feels like it's later in some ways. <laughs> uh, it's been a very busy opening in a variety of different ways, but I will say in each of our buildings and across the district, our students are doing very well. Our administrators, our teachers are off to a great start, and uh, there's an awful lot to be proud of here. So it's, it's all very positive news from our students to our staff and, and all the things that are happen that's happening across the district. Um, very proud of it all, and you should be too. Okay. okay. Thank you, Dr. Lotze. Um, with that, if I could get a motion to adjourn. Hazel. Katrina. All those in favor? Thank you. Motion.